us today for Profits of Energy Management webinar. I'm Benson from the Ameren, Illinois Act on Energy Program, and I'm here with John Nickel, who is an Energy Program Director with AIC. Talking about the financial benefits of energy management and how the Act on Energy Program can help you with energy management. Okay, before I introduce John, I'm going to cover a couple of housekeeping items. I am recording this webinar. As you can see, your names are hidden, so no none of the other participants recording will be able to see who's on the webinar. And if you're having trouble hearing me, you may need to adjust the volume control on your computer or to adjust the WebEx controls by clicking the audio button in the participant tab. And so just so you know, you are yeah. muted. And don't pick up any background noise. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat feature located on the lower right hand side of your screen and send. And we'll answer your questions as they come in. Our webinar is going to last about 60 minutes. And right now I'm going to ask you six questions to find out what you already know about energy management. So please respond by clicking the answer that best applies to you and then click submit. And I pull these up, you'll have about a minute to respond. So I'm going to open poll now. You have answered. Another few seconds here to finish up with answers. Okay, we're going to close in five seconds. answers at the end of the presentation. We're going to do the same quiz at the end to see what we learned today. So um, we will go over the questions at that time. So I'm going to turn it over to John Nickel, who's the once again the Energy Program Director, and he's going to tell you about energy management and how it can help I hear you. Okay. 
just a minute, John. We still can't hear you. Okay, let's see. I've unmuted you, so um, one here is John Nickel, the Energy Program Director. Sorry about that, John. Hey, thank, thanks, Mary. I appreciate you can hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully uh, uh, providing you some information that you don't already know and making this a uh, worthwhile hour for your morning. Um, and the, obviously, the topic here is profits from energy management. Uh, the whole idea here is, is uh, what, can we, what can we do uh, that's uh, effective, that we can fit into our business uh, operations, that we can reduce our energy costs and uh, obviously increase our, our bottom line with that. Can you help me? Uh, oh, here we go. I got it. Catherine, thanks. All right, so the quiz questions have been already asked. Uh, this is the overview of the presentation. Uh, and generally, profits of energy management. We'll get started with some basic things about uh, related to energy. Then we're going to talk about using resources effectively, uh, developing an energy management program, and getting results and seeing a uh, certain uh, number of companies that have gotten results from uh, doing energy management. Uh, that hope are uh, uh, inspirational. So the basic picture uh, in terms of global energy use, and, uh, and some people are, are certainly aware of this kind of situation where uh, you know China's rapidly increasing the energy use uh, uh, in their country. The uh, United States has uh, increased over the years or sort of a steady pace, but uh, um, very shortly, if not already occurring, is China's sort of surpassing the United States in terms of uh, overall energy use um, uh, in an absolute sense. Um, and you get other, other obviously, countries uh, in, in their respective um, path in terms of energy use, but obviously the United States uses a lot of energy, as we probably all know, and uh, that's part of the reason that uh, we want to figure out the best way to use that energy. This picture in terms of where the energy is going in the U.S., uh, uh, you can see there's four different categories, industrial, transportation, residential, and commercial. Re industrial um, use is the highest, um, but, you know, those other three are, are significant also in terms of the overall picture of energy use in the United States. All of them have been essentially growing, all the industrial energy use has uh, flattened the last uh, few years. There's a picture of the, you know, the, the production of energy, uh, particularly electric energy, and, and the costs of new coal power plants uh, that are generally uh, rising uh, a bit and are pretty expensive when you look at uh, how much it costs per kW, and this is what this graph shows, is the uh, cost per kW of a uh, new power plant in different places here. Um, and generally speaking, you know, the cost is anywhere from $500 uh, per kW to about $3,000 per kW. So it's, it's um, you know, again, an expensive resource that we need to where we uh, make the best use of and minimize the need for, for these power plants. This is looking instead of at the demand side or the, the, the kW side, this is more looking at the, the, the energy or so the KWH use uh, cost effectiveness. <clears throat> and we look at sort of the lifetime costs of these uh, these uh, different resources um, and production of energy. You can see comparing to the cost of, of investing in energy efficiency, uh, that the cost of energy efficiency is at the low end, at about $0.50 cents a KWH. <clears throat> Your big uh, coal plant is more like four cents, and it goes up from there in terms of different other say, options. Uh, you see wind is in biomass uh, on the far side in terms of renewable energy, um, you know, up near 8 kWh. And just note the uh, the dollars per ton carbon on the uh, hatch bar, bar just if, if $20 per ton carbon tax was added, that's what the Sort of impact would be for these uh, various supplies. So let's talk about the financial benefits uh, of efficiency, and sure that you know we're clear on on all of them. Um, 
first one. It obviously reduces energy costs for the facility. You know, uh, typical facilities that I've gone into and, and have been working with over the many years that I've been doing this, this work, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see 10 to 15 percent energy use reduction with best practices implemented over a five-year period. So it's, you know, anywhere from a 3 percent per year reduction in energy use um, uh, gives a typical case. Financial benefit is, is, you know, the competitive edge that those energy cost reductions provide and obviously competitive, uh, potentially lower product costs that you might have, be able to produce and provide for, uh, for the market. And is really looking at what we have in terms of these coal power plants and the energy efficiency impact uh, and cost effectiveness of energy efficiency in a general sense. Uh, energy efficiency um, is less than $500 a kW. As we saw on those uh, that original bar graph that I showed you, the cost for power plants is is $2,000 and greater at some in times. Some cases, I should say. There's we talked about the benefits of energy efficiency, but obviously there's some investment and cost in terms of time and, and obviously resources and capital that come into play in terms of the cost of energy efficiency. One cost is, is trying to create an energy team or champion at your facility. And this is uh, basically getting those meetings scheduled that you need to do and find the opportunities. Create a management plan takes some time. Invest in behavioral changes if that's something that's useful. And obviously in projects is another uh, you know, invest a cost, I guess, of energy efficiency that's uh, that's needed, I guess, to uh, to get financial benefits. More about the benefits, uh, and make sure that you know we can talk to, uh, not only uh, convince ourselves, but convince others in our in our organization that uh, it's worth uh, investing in those costs. Uh, again, savings potential, 10 to 15 percent over five years. And you know, zero to two year type payback projects. Uh, as an example, for a million dollars of energy costs, this means the savings of $100,000 to $150,000. Okay, and so 50% savings uh, can can come from very you know, no very low cost uh, types of measures. So the champion or energy team um, is that 50 to 75,000. Uh, savings that you can get from just uh, again these no no cost types of things, and that's without capital. Twenty um, percent of of other costs uh, savings uh, uh, can be justified. And then as an hour again, this is just an example. This results in a justification for 150 to 225 hours per year for this champion or team to spend uh, trying to attain these uh, these savings. It's a way to sort of from out, you know, how much time is really worth it uh, for your facility to go after these 15%. Again, sometimes facilities uh, obviously can get more than 15%. Uh, I've seen many times where it's 25 to even 50% savings over a course of a number of years. If it's project investment, you know, cost of energy use, obviously, you goes up over time. Um, so it's... Uh, that needs to be taken into account. Uh, most projects, uh, again, efficiency projects, are pretty low risk, uh, especially with the proven best practices. Additional benefits can come from quality improvements, employee comfort, other things that come into account in terms of risk of equipment failure. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's potential opportunities for benefits for, for community and customer image. And many projects are very low cost, and some, again, are no, no cost, which makes it an attractive investment. This one, just to, to give an example of, of looking at the life cycle costs of, of various pieces of equipment, this happens to be uh, looking at motor. Uh, presently, motor efficiency is, is, a, is part of a uh, requirement. Uh, premium efficient motors are, are required to be manufactured these days, so you don't have as much of an option as you used to have. But looking at the cost of a motor <laughs> and the efficiency of the motor um, and the energy use, um, I guess is a good example of how much energy versus the, the initial cost. And you can see, 
you know, the initial cost of the motor is about 2% uh, of the overall cost, where the uh, lifetime energy cost is more like 97 and 8%. So, you know, more for a higher premium efficient motor is, is uh, worth it. And that's, you know, why basically it's been mandated as opposed to uh, a, a, an option for folks, because it just makes, you know, it's just it's clearly the right thing to do. Uh, effectively using resources, you know, uh, the, the suggestions that, that we've come up with, again, for many years of, of doing this, first we need to designate energy team or champion, uh, use our energy staff to help identify opportunities that, if you need that, uh, use vendors to specify projects, Use energy incentives. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the, the, the uh, presentation here. To buy costs for projects, develop management plan, and monitor project results and energy use. So that's for the team champion, uh, meet on a regular schedule. I think for larger companies, we recommend meeting every two weeks. For for folks may not have as much energy intensity, uh, you get once a month is is probably appropriate. Of opportunities, other tasks, develop and implement implement energy management plan, select, select I'm sorry, select vendor quotes is an obvious project uh, management, proceed project installations, track results, and monitor facility energy use. Uh, not only, the if you can, the energy use of the project itself, but overall your uh, energy use per um, per foot or per product produced. What is an energy management program? It's a systematic approach uh, to, to manage the energy costs. Uh, it's have some continual improvement aspect to it so that you can take fish for projects. And it's kind of integrated into your, into your business practices that you have now so that it's, it's, uh, you're able to do it without uh, interrupting other processes. And, you know, it's an approach that, you know, basically minimizes the, the cost uh, of energy uh, that's appropriate for your organization. Um, again, again, it's got to fit within within the energy intensity of your own organization. It's got to fit within, again, the business uh, options that you already have. And what, it, what it's got to do in the end is, is be something not only appropriate, but give best practices that uh, you can within your typical, in your station in your organization. Uh, energy programs useful. Energy costs are increasing. Again, we talked about that. System plan which ensures that all opportunities are considered. I think this is one of the key things that I think, in terms of, uh, you know, you go home after, you, after you know, your day and understand uh, that you're, you're doing all you can that's reasonable for your organization to do. If you have an energy management plan, you haven't taken that approach, you know, you're sort of at the whim of either then coming in the door to, to inform you of opportunities or uh, just, you know, sort of tripping over them as opposed to understanding that you've done a thorough review of your facility and you've really made an in intelligent assessment of what's, what's right for your organization to do. Um, again, a new improvement plan ensures that you know, even new opportunities that are come up are considered um <clears throat> real energy can be managed as part of your business. You know, uh, well, the key things here is that energy is is manageable uh, resource, and, and and if you're doing that effectively, um, you're not taking advantage of all the opportunities you might have. So, what are practice programs in this area? Uh, in terms of energy management, strong leadership, resource allocation, a culture that recognizes the value of energy efficiency is, is the best practice in energy programs. Something again to the degree that makes sense within your facility. Assessment, assessment of all capital projects is the key. And that uh, any new new purchases that you might be looking at should be a part of a process of your procur procurement to look at efficiency. Adjustments, uh, either in operation of equipment that you're using, uh, or again, as as things change for your organization, to be able to bring in energy efficiency 
yeah. to the consideration of, of, of the changes. And of course, uh, from energy management practices, uh, inter news. Management in theory and in practice is what we guess we've seen. In theory, the energy management commitment, but in practice, you sort of have more energy management concern. In theory, you have an energy champion, but in, in practice, a lot of times, it becomes just another hat for someone to wear. And you measure and monitor projects, but it's really hard sometimes to justify the submeters because there's not a payback to the submeter. Uh, communicate and really you know, advertise your successes and how things are going uh, and, and, and what plan you might have. And I guess in practice, many times people fall back to just looking at uh, how much uh, energy have we used versus what we budgeted for. And energy saving goals is uh, one of those things that come up very quickly with an energy plan, but you know, what do you base it on? And again, implement projects, uh, sometimes you know, the support isn't there. Uh, so energy management steps that, that we recommend and establish a baseline energy use and facility profile. So now we're going to meet our presentation here. Estimate energy use for major systems. You know, look at your systems. Uh, again, get at least a, an approximate estimate of how much energy is that system using based on its hours of operation and its general size. Again, help you look at that uh, with Act on Energy staff if you need to. Best practice opportunities. You know, look at the major systems uh, that are again are using energy use. Investigate the best practices that have, that are out there. Again, Act Energy is a resource for that. Coins and project costs of opportunities. Um, you know, basically take those opportunities and, and decide how much is it going to save for your particular situation. Um, and what the cost of those projects are. Determine what the return on investment will be with that. From there, you know, basically prioritizing the projects, you know, and then setting out a plan with that and stepping through uh, and doing the project management that you would do on another project to make sure you move forward with the project and bring it to a conclusion. So I'm in a little bit more depth with uh, these the basic uh, six steps. That uh, baseline energy use, this is just an example of uh, a, a, a chart that looks at the energy that this happens to be a wastewater facility. Uh, it's got its monthly energy use there, uh, the, the um, use per million gallons, that's what the MG stands for, um, gallons of, of wastewater treated, and then you know the total electric cost. And so it's to look at what use And you know, and then graphing that can show again some changes from month to month, and and really highlight uh, where you want to make some uh, improvements. You look at a facility profile, and at where your energy use um, is um, in terms of of the density of energy use uh, across not only the million gallons in this case, but also as a percent of um, other operating costs. Uh, is it a, is it a ten percent of your operating costs? Is it two percent? Is, is it more than ten percent? You know, so a, a good feel and communicate that across your organization. Then the step is, is again break out where you're using your energy what, in terms of major systems uh, and try to you know refine that as best you can. But you know, to sort of uh, look at the marginal utility of breaking it out uh, too far. But the better you understand where you're using energy the better you can manage it. And then, you know, step three, identify opportunities within the different major use systems. This happens to be a list of best practices for uh, wastewater. Um, and again, you can go through each one of these best practices and determine is, it, is this the appropriate opportunity for your facility. And four through six, you know, quantify safe opportunities and the savings, get quotes that you need, look at the return on investment, and start to prioritize those projects 
move them forward, and then manage. I guess I, I'll go back here. In terms of project management, one of the uh, aspects to that, or two key aspects, is one is is once the project's done, is to is to do whatever you can to reasonably verify that the savings did occur. And once, hopefully, that does uh, uh, coincide with what your estimates were in the first place, um, then to communicate um, uh, the success, I guess, on the on the project, not only uh, within your group but you know broadly in terms of the organization, so that people can understand uh, uh, that you know, this has happened within your organization. I think it's important that people um, obviously you know, tout their successes. But also, you know, no one, no one really knows just by looking at your facility whether you're efficient or you're not. And so, I think uh, this is one of the ways that you can help people understand that you're moving down that path. So, um, I guess we're going to a review question here. Um, can we provide the the first step in energy management that we uh, put out there in terms of? Uh, of the, the, I guess the first step of energy management, uh, and what you can do is you can raise your hand, and I believe there's a, a place um, uh, underneath the participant bar that says, um, you know, you can go ahead and says raise hand, and you can raise your hand and uh, provide uh, that answer. Jane, I'd have their participant window available. So okay. what somebody can do is you know the answer to type a your response to everybody in chat, or you can type it in chat to just me or John, and we will be able to see it and um, be unmute you so you can give your answer. We'll see if the souls out there or folks who are listening. <laughs> Um, We're looking for step one of the energy management. I think you were going to get quizzed this morning, so uh, you, you may have this may come as, as a surprise. And over these these steps um, again, and I'll be glad to do that. The, the first step I, is I do have a couple of, sorry, I do have a couple of responses here. Um, one person says establish a baseline. And then someone else is responding. Um, they're telling us first get a commitment from management to do energy efficiency. Um, and the person is saying how much energy you use, no sign of use, cream, and then someone else says baseline. Yeah. Well, you know, as, you know, there isn't exactly a right answer in terms of of. Uh, of this, and because I, I, I hear the one answer of you know get get upper management commitment, and that's that is a great you know first step. Um, another first step, if you already have that, is uh, you know establishing the baseline. I think that was what we we had uh, been looking for, but uh, I think there were a lot of other good good examples there too. Um, but again, one of the first steps, if you know, is is definitely establishing the baseline, and, and another one is getting that commitment up front. So, uh, but you have a good sense of what the second step is. Once again, type your answers into chat. Have a facility profile. Get a champion and form a team. SMUs. Identify sources of consumption. Get overall year electric use. Low use of major systems. Yeah, they, they captured it there. Mary, appreciate people who have responded on that. Um, and really, the second step, again, for baseline anyway, is to look at uh, you know where are you using your your energy and how is it being consumed, and, and breaking that out by your major systems. So great, thanks, thanks for that. Third step, uh, anybody want to take a shot at that? We've at where are using your energy and, and how it's broken out. Opportunities by source. Identify best practices. Identify opportunities. Identify best practices. Identify opportunities to save. Okay, there's definitely a trend there. Definitely a consensus, I guess. 
Yeah, and that's that's uh, certainly uh, I think again one of the the core parts of this is obviously what you know what can you do uh, to uh, reduce energy use and, and do best practices that that are sort of low risk standard uh, things that you might not be doing already. So that's great. Number three is uh, you know identify best practices. So four, what would you do from there? Answer coming in: Apply savings and project cost. Quantify savings. Sounds like people are remembering these steps. Yeah, let's. Well, yeah, I mean, fourth again, obviously another you know, pretty obvious thing to do is quantify the savings that you have. You know, think you may have a good opportunity on, based to flesh out um, their you know, savings is large enough, and then whether the cost is low enough to make a profitable um, you know, venture for your particular organization. Um, and, and I think once you do, you know, once you do that, then you, you've, you've ticked off again and checked off, I guess, the um, the back to the opportunities, investigated them, come up with that assessment for each of these opportunities that that you think are are there. And again, and you can you can go home after the the day is done and say, hey, listen, I'm doing all the best practices I can, you know, uh, to keep energy costs down and get all the other benefits uh, that are there for energy efficiency. Uh, you know, so I guess I won't, won't go continue to ask the question for when to respond to all this. I remind people, and the sixth step from that point on is to understand that how you're going to prioritize these very projects that you've identified as, as good economic opportunities. Um, and sometimes that is not just necessarily taking the best product uh, with the highest uh, return on investment, but it'd be uh, some other reasons that you want to select. Um, a particular project, it, maybe it has some uh, maintenance benefits that you're tr you've got a headache with, or or whatever, and you just use your other criteria that you might have uh, to finally, you know, again, prioritize the projects, and then schedule for those projects that you can hopefully reasonably keep, and uh, then uh, set that plan in place. And generally speaking, you know, we usually try to recommend, you know, a sort of a three-year plan for folks and a three-year horizon to uh, make those kind of uh, uh, and then the thing is, obviously, once that plan's been approved and you're moving forward with whatever capital budgets you need, that uh, you know the management of those projects is, is obviously a key thing to making sure that what you intended to happen is happening and it's successful. And a part of that project management is at the end looking at uh, you know how well did this work out and briefly uh, summarizing that. And if it's a good success, um, you, you know you certainly I think. We recommend uh, communicating that to the rest of your organization so that as other projects come up, you know they understand what the what the mission is here, and and a lot of times you need buy-in from a number of different parts of your organization. And so I think that communication is important. Thank you. I appreciate your participation on that review questions. I guess the slide that shows again the the steps. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, again ongoing energy management. Once you've sort of gone through the process of uh, this, this plan exercise uh, once, uh, you know, how do you keep this sort of moving uh, from month to month and year to year? Uh, you do need that strong commitment uh, from the management to make it happen so that you can spend the time to do this. Uh, energy saving performance is, is critical, again, not only for yourself, but also for others in your organization to understand the impact of these projects and, and why it's important. Form energy team is, you know, again, as just a one person doing it, it can be very effective in getting buy-in from other parts of the organization. Ideas. Help that long-term energy management plan, uh, continually sort of updating it as, as things may change. And that's the continual improvement side, too, which is, uh, not only changing it as, as uh, new situations arise or new opportunities uh, present themselves, but also uh, once again projects are done to verify and understand uh, the impact of the savings. I want to go more in, in tracking performance. This is looking at the um, uh, what the KI or key performance indicator. Uh, this is one way to track. 
and set some goals for yourself, uh, especially if you're manufacturing, looking at uh, per product output, uh, you know, a KWH or, or BTU per output is a great way to try how well you're doing because uh, if you're um, uh, producing a product, you might be using more energy, but if you can get the intensity down or the, the KPI down, that's really uh, a key. So a way to look at the KPI, uh, look at it, um, you know, in terms of a graphical um, chart um, and uh, intensity per month. And basically, what you're trying to do is is, is change the y-intercept or the slope line as you make some changes in your energy use. One of the, uh, uh, as part of this is uh, in Illinois. And energy have a tool to help uh, folks, you know, do energy management. It's called Practical Energy Management, and um, the tool that goes through a lot of the same things that I just went through in terms of uh, uh, doing the uh, energy management steps. Uh, a template of spreadsheets and forms uh, to do the program. Use the continuous improvement approach, and it seemed to me the uh, is ANSI uh, MSC 2005 standard for energy management. And if, if folks have heard of the ISO 50001 uh, that has now been out for about three months, um, this is sort of a precursor to, to, to doing that full-fledged energy management approach. It's a starting point for, for, for new program efforts, really. And it can enhance ones, uh, folks that have, have programs already in place. So I... I uh, I'm going to go through the PEM just a little bit here. There's a management plan, uh, the facility profile, the energy use profile press, uh, section, the businesses section, give you a list of various, uh, we have, I think, 16 common uh, systems that we go through, the best practices, uh, you know, opportunities for each of those 16 um, common systems. And we also have a tool to you know, pr pr prioritize the projects. And help project manage, and then look at your key performance indicators, and then keep a continual improvement approach moving with with your uh, with your effort. This is uh, you know the, the uh, PEM approach, I guess, in a, in a nutshell, in terms of the kind of things that we're looking for an energy management team or champion to sort of, uh, do with their energy management and. And, and just help them, uh, you know, without having to reinvent the wheel uh, on some of these steps. Uh, so that's the intent. And the thing is, this PEM tool is free. Um, you know, we're looking to encourage, and Ameren, Illinois has goals that they need to meet uh, as, reg as, uh, as part of their um, regulation to get energy savings. And so we feel this PEM tool is a great way for uh, customers like yourselves to, uh, again, identify opportunities and for us to help you move forward and, and, and get the profits of energy efficiency. So it's free. Uh, program representative, you know, can come to your facility and, you know, sit down with you for, you know, half hour to maybe an hour and, you know, walk you through it so you, you don't have to, you know, read it uh, and you just can understand uh, it's going to use for your, or how best it's going to fit for your facility. Um, it does have a you know a CD with it that, that you know, all the spreadsheets and all that on it, and then in some hard copy uh, information. So that's what the EM tool is. So if you are interested, to, you know, call or or um, you know email uh, anybody at Act on Energy, and and uh, we they can get connected with us, and we can we can uh, make that happen. There's a question. Which of the following statements are true about the PEM? All that apply. Um, Put the poll question here in just a minute. Is this part of the poll question then? Okay. Yes, yes. This is the question, and so I'm going to uh, make this available to everyone here. Question, Mary? Yeah. Yes. One question at this point, right? Yes, this one's just one question. 
Okay. So okay. just select your what you think is the right answer on this and edit it, please. How much time on this? <laughs> have a minute. Oh, okay. So we have about 30 seconds left. It looks like most people have submitted. So I'm getting ready to close the poll. So get your final answers in. And there, I'll, then I'll share the results. Okay, it's going to close in three, two, and one. And you should be able to see the results. And the answer is. is a, C, and D are all true about the pen tool. Okay. Well, um, the next uh, set of slides here, there's not too many left to go, so we're going to definitely end uh, maybe even a little early. Um, so let's look at some companies, I guess, that have benefited from action, just to, again, look at uh, some of what what's uh, possible. Um, Saints Hospital is one example. Uh, they simply replaced all their LED, placed all exit signs with LED exit signs. Uh, they did 90 of them. They got incentive from Acton Energy of $1,800 and saved $4,800 uh, per year with that. And and so their payback was, um, I'm sure, under a year, um, uh, quite a bit probably under a year. <laughs> Don't have that information on that. At the university, uh, they did a uh, exchange of their T12 system lighting to T8 lighting, T8 lights. They replaced their T12 lamps, and lamps for folks who don't know are the uh, the uh, lamps. They're uh, in terms of uh, diameter, they're an inch and a half in diameter um, as opposed to the inch uh, T8 lamps. And in any case, they replaced 1,800 T12 lamps. Uh, was uh, provided an incentive for Acton Energy of $21,000, and they saved uh, 17000 per year savings. Uh, the use comparison between a T12 and a T8 lamp, and I mentioned that we do have um, the highest incentive we're ever going to have for replacing those T12 lamps going on right now through, uh, I believe, uh, the end of October. Uh, so if you have any T12 lamps, the other part about this is that there's uh, the high probability that T12 lamps will be um, no longer manufactured after uh, until next year. So um, there, there's the need to do this project anyway um, in the near future. We might as well do it now while our incentives are the highest it's ever going to be uh, and, and make it happen and get the energy savings now. Um, and the cost of this kind of project is in terms of return on investment is pretty good. It's it's uh, generally around two-year payback. Um, with our incentive, it, it can be uh, even more than that. So, again, I think it's definitely worth looking into. John, I have a couple questions here. Sure. One person asked, what did the upgrade cost at Bradley? I don't have that information, but, I, again, I would suspect that it's, um, you know, not – Again, two-year payback. Um, I'm not sure what the um, you know operation on this particular one was, but in, in general, two to sometimes three years is the is the payback. So you know the the, the cost of the project might have been uh, you know anywhere between you know thirty and fifty dollars. I would suspect. And then I have another question: um, Is there a comprehensive list of all the Illinois energy incentives available? There is on the on the website. Yeah, um, go to www.actonenergy.com and 
you go to the business section, first of all, go to Illinois, uh, Ameren, Illinois' uh, side. There's an Ameren, Missouri side, but go to Ameren, Illinois. And on Ameren, Illinois, there's the you know, residential and business section. So go to the business section if you want to see what those incentives are, and you'll find uh, a lot of different information on the uh, various incentives for different types of, uh, of uh, technologies like lighting or, or HVAC or, or compressed air or other things. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, any questions, Mary? Um, one is asking, what is the incentive? I know that it says um, $21,000 incentive. Maybe he's asking what is the incentive, what that is, uh, incentive is for? What he probably was asking is what is the incentive uh, for raising a T12 lamp? And off the top of my head, I'm sorry, I can't uh, uh, answer that, but if anybody else from Acton Energy is on the line and can ch and send you a, 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 the answer on that, I'd appreciate it. And, uh, this is Jeff, and the incentives vary from $3 down to $7, or up to $7 for a T12 replacement, uh, depending on what the application is, but it's dollars. And that's it's per lamp? Per, correct. Yeah. So $3 depending on the application, is that what I heard, Jeff? Correct. Plus, uh, through October 31st, you can increase that incentive amount by 10%. Uh, after October 31st, it will be decreased down to 5%. So that's something that should be taken into account also. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, thank you, John. That's all the questions we have. Yeah, appreciate the questions. Uh, if anybody's having any, please feel free to, on any of these, uh, this in, and if we don't get get to them today, we'll definitely get back to you uh, at some point if we're not able to do it uh, on the webinar today. Okay, so Kroger uh, Grocery Store, they changed their case lighting to LED case lighting. They're using the fluorescent lighting that they had. They were able to get 2 million kWh in annual savings uh, with about 300, resulting about $300,000 of annual savings in the 30 stores that they did this. And part about this is it's just better quality light, uh, and it lasts you know, five times as long as the fluorescent lighting that they had in there originally. So, other benefits besides just the energy reduction, um, but that kind of uh, perks that uh, that they did. Um, if industries uh, had replaced or called, I'm sorry, six VFDs, with, uh, getting a fifty-one thousand dollar incentive. Um, about $1,000 um, per year in savings result out of a 1.1 year uh, payback. So uh, a cost-effective project for them to do. And, uh, you know, they they got a pretty hefty incentive uh, from Act on Energy to to make that happen. Connor uh, did the compressed air retro cushioning. And, uh, Basically, the commissioning uh, of their compressed air system meant that, that one of our um, uh, class service providers came into their facility to do a study where 80% um, of the study was paid for by Act on Energy to look at their compressed air system and really understand what opportunities they had, either small, short-term, or large, short-term opportunities, or you know, longer uh, capital investment type of opportunities. Uh, and then from there, uh, they, they were able to uh, uh, making some changes, um, and they also looked at um, some long-term projects. And, and from that, they got some custom incentives uh, from Act on Energy of two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars, and about a two hundred thousand uh, dollar, you know, per savings uh, with a zero to one and a half year payback on those on those savings. Overall, so, again, an uh, example of a uh, uh, customer that, that we've worked with uh, that really uh, took advantage of that retro commissioning program for compressed air. We have commissioning for um, uh, models, too, which look at the, the building systems. Quick projects, uh, just a, a way to maybe get things moving within your organization if you haven't done these. Uh, you know, CFLs for any... Uh, particular um, uh, incandescent lamps that you might have, the LED 
exit signs, the T12 that we mentioned before, the T8 lights, um, uh, and looking at the online store, uh, looking at the very well exit sign kits are there, and CFLs are there, and some others are there to, again, get some quick hits uh, off of there, and that's uh, available through the uh, Act on Energy website also. Uh, those are, again, some quick things that you can do, easy, uh, not, you know, risk types of projects. Oh, so, you know, benefits of project installation. Now we, we obviously, uh, again, we have our goals to help uh, all our customers save uh, as much energy as we can. And you know, so, you know, the sooner we get started, the better, you know, not only for us in terms of goals and, and helping make that happen. And, but in terms of, uh, you know, we're hoping your your goals in terms of uh, cost savings. And so the sooner we get started, the better. And we do have uh, some, uh, uh, applications that, again, I mentioned are on the website that are good through December 31st of 2011. The, the present incentive amounts are good through that time. Uh, after that time, you know, may, uh, uh, you know, they may go down or they may go up. Uh, uh, more than likely, uh, as things look now in our program, we're doing pretty well in terms of meeting our goals. So, um, you know, more likely that I guess that they'll go down. So, I encourage folks to, to uh, really look into this and, and look at that and, and, and make some decisions, you know, and, and send an application before December 31st. Um, John, we do have one more question here. Um, are you ready for a question? I am. How much does a typical study cost? A study, uh, it's it, the commissioning study costs anywhere from you know depending on if it's a small system, uh, you know five thousand dollars I guess probably is one of the smaller ones to uh, up to possibly thirty thousand um, uh, dollars in that range. I think most of them come in more in the you know ten to fifteen thousand dollar range. And in fact, on energy in terms. Of, of these retro commissioning studies, we have up from 50 to 100. I'm sorry, 50 to 80 percent of the cost of the study. Great. Uh, is you, you know, we we're sharing the risk in terms of the of the results. Um, and, and if you have a compressed air system, I think you know, really strongly encourage uh, to consider this because um, it's a great opportunity to really have someone. Uh, an expert go through the system and really provide some um, very useful um, application of opportunities, and uh, you know, hopefully, obviously, leading to some really good savings. Okay, I have one more question here. Um, what is the store website? Right, that's an online website that uh, Act on Energy has, has hired a group to manage. Um, basically, it provides. Um, uh, very products like CFLs, um, uh, exit sign uh, kits, other types of uh, energy efficiency products that you can go on online. And again, you can get through it through our Act on Energy website. Uh, and um, basically, it's again a way to, to order equipment. Uh, you get uh, a reduced price uh, on the uh, on these various items based on incentives that we're providing. You know, right at the point of sale. So it's delivered right to your your facility. Great. Jim um, is asking, do you offer a chart online that shows our usage after the, over the last five years? I have a, a chart online. Of, of a particular energy cost usage? I'm not sure that's all the question says. Well, so we do have for certain uh, customers, I know that there's opportunities to um, sign up and get um, their energy use um, electronically. Um, so there is that opportunity. And, and, and we definitely would want to encourage, um, and again, that can be part of the practical management process. So if there is an interest in that, that uh, you know, give us a call, and we can have one of our energy advisors work with you to make you know to whatever we can possibly get for you to to know you know how you're using your energy. Great. 
Yes, he, he says that is what he was asking. His um, he says yes. I so that you answered that question. Okay. Thanks, yeah, please uh, give us a call on that, please, and, and let's talk about your particular situation. Okay. So, there, what is Act on Energy? Hopefully, you know a little bit about what Act on Energy is. It's a program run by Ameren to promote energy efficiency uh, with their customers and uh, has not only technical support uh, you can take advantage of for free, also um, obviously incentives for projects. And so you know, these are the incentive areas that that uh, we have did, but basically covers anything that you might save uh, energy on because we also have a custom program that, that's a catch-all. And, uh, we, we do both electric and gas projects. And we have them packaged by some specialty areas, agriculture, lodging, convenience store, commercial kitchens, healthcare. But if you don't see your particular facility on there, it doesn't mean we don't serve you. We serve everybody. So um, this is just a way of us uh, targeting certain types of uh, customers. Any, you know, various the phone numbers that you can get connected with us and, and get an energy advisor to talk with you about your particular situation and get more detailed information. Oh, is that the last slide? Let's see. Yes, um, now we're going to have another quick quiz. Um, we're going to do the same poll we did at the beginning and see. We remember how much we've learned throughout the presentation. So I'm going to make that available now, and everyone should be able to do your and. You'll have about a minute and a half. Another third seconds. Remember to make your answers. Okay, the poll is going to be closing in about seconds. Three, two, one. And I'm going to share the results with everyone. So you should see the results. For one, the correct answer is C. For two, the correct answer is B, 3.2 cents per kilowatt hour. For three, the correct answer is F, and efficiency is the most cost-effective electricity resource. Four, the answer is A, true. Five, the correct answer is E, 90 plus percent. And for six, what is an energy management program? The correct answer is D, all of the above. April. Yeah, we do. Great. So, I did a couple of quick things. Um, You'll be getting a survey um, via email uh, to ask about your experience during this webinar. So. If if you could please complete the survey and let us know what you liked about the webinar and how it can be approved, we would really appreciate that. And then I'd also like to mention that we have some other webinars coming up.
uh, save energy and process steam systems next Wednesday, December 21st from 8.30 to 9.30, and you'll be getting an invitation for that. Um, on October 5th, we'll have energy management systems, and October 12th, save money through HVAC efficiencies. May I add a few things? Sure. I just say, first of all, thank you to everybody for joining us today. I guess I, I appreciate your time and hope that it was, you know, worth your hour. But I think one of the best ways to make it worth your hour is, is give us a call if you haven't already and let us, uh, you know, work with you and, and find out what your individual situation is and see what opportunities may present itself so that we can help uh, you reduce your energy costs and, and move forward with that. So, again, uh, for time. Thank you much, and I will get back to the rest of you about some other questions that you've posted. And the presentation will be available on the Act on Energy website on the education and training page. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.